Hey, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to go over the line transform component. I've been waiting to sort of do a tutorial on just a straight component for a while. We've been doing some complicated tutorials in Collider Land and Dynamic uh, Variable Land, so this should be an interesting one. Uh, line transform allows you to transform a position between uh, two points uh, on a line. So it's really good for things like animations. I'm going to show you what I mean, otherwise that won't make much sense. So actually I've got my private UI on, let me turn that off. I don't need that. So what I've got here is uh, two red spheres and a blue cube that is just moving between them. Now you may think that this is a static animation, but it's not actually a static animation at all. I can move this red sphere around, and the blue cube will continue going between it. Not only that, it will actually speed up if the distance between them is uh, really large, because it has to cover the uh, same distance in the same amount of time. Now this is being um, tweaked using logic, so I'll show you how I set up in a moment, but it means that you can basically do uh, an animation between two points that goes on a straight line really, really easily. Let's take a look at how to create this exact setup. So I'm going to flow over here a bit, and I'm going to go ahead and equip a logic uh, developer tooltip. First thing we need is those two spheres, so I'm going to go ahead and create new 3D model sphere. Once the sphere is here, I'm going to use its uh, gizmo here to shrink it down a little bit and uh, then I'll inspect it once, and then clear the inspectors, uh, tismos even, to get rid of that uh, gizmo. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it, so we've now got our two spheres, and then I'll uh, make a box here, shrink that down, and there we go, got the exact same setup from in terms of shapes from over there. I'm just going to change these colors up a bit, so for this time I'm actually going to use blue for the spheres, change our color to, let's go for green, put the cube in the middle. That's all the models that we'll need. The next thing that we need to do is go ahead and inspect the cube. So I'm going to aim my uh, developer tool bit, push secondary, open inspector, and we're going to scroll down to the bottom, and we're going to go to attach component, transform, drivers, and then line transform. Uh, it's down at L, line transform. Here it is. Now the cube's going to just jump away and disappear, that's fine, until you set it up it will do that. Um, line transform takes either two points or two point anchors um, before it will actually start doing anything. So I'm going to go ahead and use the point anchor, you can also use the points, but point anchor basically refers to a slot, so we're going to use the spheres for that. So here's the first sphere, I'm going to drag sphere and drop it into point zero anchor. And now you'll see that the cube is back on that sphere, and I'm going to go ahead and inspect the second sphere here and drag that into point one anchor. Now that that's set up, I'm going to animate the uh, cube going between uh, sphere 1 and sphere 2. To do that, we're going to use a tiny bit of logic, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, logics tooltip here, and we're going to need a few nodes, and I'll explain them as we go. So if you go to input first, and you look for T, spawn that in the world, T just returns a constantly increasing float, which refers to how many sort of seconds the world's been open, etc. We can head on uh, back here, and we can go to math, and then we're going to go to sign and we're going to plug t into the out into the input of sign and then we're going to need this remap negative one dot 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 one to zero dot dot one this is a, a beautiful name for a node um because it describes exactly what it does but it can be a little bit daunting what it does is it takes any input number um, which is negative between the values of negative one and one and remaps it so that it maps between zero and one This is particularly useful for sine because sine does a sine curve where it goes between positive one and negative one But we actually need it to go between zero and one So this just does that so you can see this if I pull out a display node for this You'll see that this goes between negative one and positive one and I plug it into remap uh, negative one to whatever that node is called uh, It's very difficult to say and then we spawn this out. You'll see it just goes between zero and one here with that done, that's all the logic nodes we're going to need. We just need to plug it into the component. So for that, go to the word line transform, grab it, return to some space, hit secondary, and you get the interface card for the line transform component. Plug the output of this remap node into line point, and now you'll see that everything is hooked up as it was over there at the start of the video. That's essentially all there is to it. Um, do you remember that you can move these around to change where the uh, animation is going? You can also uh, dynamically write to these uh, point anchors, uh, sort of any time using various nodes. Uh, and you can also change things such as the offset here. So if I wanted uh, things to be offset a little bit, say say 0 0.1, let's do negative, so it'll be a easier to see on the, on the camera here. So now you'll see that it's offset by negative uh, 0 0.2, which is that direction. And that means that the cube is going alongside the uh, two points. 
you could use the offsets here for things like i don't know cars animating um in a city that would uh, probably work because you want them to be separated out into say lanes and you could use the offset for that there's also a rotation offset this allows you to uh, again specify a rotation offset so uh, that might not actually be that obvious with a cube we'll go ahead and well, it won't be obvious if i do 90 if we do 45 here there you go you see the cube is now uh, tilted by 45 degrees you can also change the uh, line position type to from relative to absolute, which just changed the internal mass about how it works. Um, that also usually slows things down a lot as it's now moving, you know, absolute coordinates in mind. That's really all there is to it. Um, I uh, will see you on the next one. I hope this is useful. Um, I'm also going to link in the video description actually a video where I do this manually using um, some other notes, because uh, this is totally an alternative to that video. See you next time. Bye-bye.